have Justin Moran joining us from Just In Time Personal Training. Justin has been working in the industry for over 20 years and been running a successful fitness business for the past five years. Justin, firstly, congratulations on your service and commitment to the fitness industry. We understand as a fitness business owner, you and your team of exercise professionals work very closely with dietitians when clients seek specific nutrition advice. Can you provide us with a little more insight? Clients often have an expectation that our fitness-related services are coupled with specific nutrition advice. It's common that their nutrition-related questions push the boundaries of our scope of practice, which is why we work in collaboration with accredited practicing dietitians, uh, in particular Lisa Middleton, whom we refer our clients for professional and accurate advice. So, what nutrition advice do your clients typically ask for? We get asked a variety of questions. Uh, some common ones include specific advice around weight loss, muscle gain, uh, performance and recovery, supplements, uh, and I suppose more specific food group advice such as carbohydrates, uh, salt, caffeine, and protein. Justin, how do you respond to a client when you ask specific nutrition related questions that require tailored advice such as how do I eat to lose weight? We're well aware of where the boundaries lie for us as exercise professionals uh, when advising clients on nutrition. There are many nutrition related questions that we can address using these uh, Australian Dietary Guidelines. Uh, if a client wants to lose weight, which is probably the most common thing we'd get, I would first start by educating them about body composition uh, and that fat and muscle are two different tissues, education being the key. Uh, I would then usually direct them to the five food groups outlined in these guidelines uh, and explain that uh, selecting foods from each of these five food groups in appropriate amounts will achieve the nutrient needs essential for reducing body fat percentage and uh, in turn weight. If they're after more specific advice outside of basic healthy eating information, such as a specific dietary plan, I would recommend that they get a full dietary assessment uh, and professional advice from an accredited practicing dietitian or accredited sports dietitian if they participate in high intensity exercise. My team and I work closely with Lisa Middleton as I've mentioned previously. It's often an expectation of clients that we as personal trainers can do everything including providing detailed nutrition advice uh, so that it's important that we are open and honest with our boundaries. Uh, collaborative practice between us and dietitians is important in minimising inaccurate and inappropriate nutrition advice and I suppose also to, to minimise the likelihood of legal liability associated with the provision of such advice. In my many years of experience I have come across many personal trainers in the industry that align themselves with network marketing, so called nutrition brands and that is outside of our scope of practice. There's obviously still plenty of nutrition advice that an exercise professional can provide to their clients to assist with their goals whilst remaining in scope. Can you tell me more about the referral process and how you work in conjunction with Lisa? Well Bill, when a client is after nutrition advice outside of basic healthy eating information, such as information around optimising sport performance or a specific meal plan, there are a number of steps I'm required to follow before referring them off to an accredited practicing dietitian or an accredited sports dietitian. Uh, effective client referral helps ensure that my clients receive the right care at the right time to meet their individual needs. Fitness Australia's Referral Essentials Guide represents the essential components of successful referrals and sets out the fundamental steps that I take throughout the client referral pathway. Number one, screen and assess. Firstly, I conduct an initial client consultation and screening in order to identify if my client has any health risks and determine their specific needs. Number two, I would then evaluate uh, to ensure that I work within the boundaries of my scope of practice as an exercise professional. Uh, then I would evaluate whether I require guidance from a health professional to meet my client's needs. Number three, I would then decide what to do. So I would then decide what expertise is required to develop and manage my client's nutrition, uh, whether it be an accredited practicing dietitian or an accredited sports dietitian. Four would then be to prepare. So I would compile a relevant, accurate and concise information for the referral. Uh, number five would be to ensure that I get consent. Um, I would ensure that I involve my client in that process and gain informed consent to share their health information. 
And number six would be to connect. Uh, it's important that I plan ahead and ensure that my referral actions are appropriate, professional and effective. So what do you do with the advice that's provided by the dietitian? To support the advice provided to the client, often as I see the client more than the dietitian, I may ask in an appropriate environment how it's all tracking, uh, then collaborate with the dietitian, of course with the client's consent, uh, about the goals that they may be achieving or extra support that they may need. Uh, I find that it's important to commit to ongoing dialogue and feedback to achieve a positive health outcome for my client. Um, we will, I suppose, constantly touch base regarding monitoring workloads, intensity, uh, the output of exercise, whilst aligning with the dietitian's nutrition advice or their plans in order to ensure that we are consistent, relevant and current. Thanks Justin for your insights and how you work in collaboration with allied health professionals, particularly dietitians. Thanks for having me Bill, appreciate it.